So Big Hospitality is here at the restaurant show and I'm joined by Claude Bosi from two Michelin starred restaurant, Hibiscus. Thanks very much for joining us, Claude. Uh, so you're here at the restaurant show. What do you make of it this year? I mean, uh, what I like about this event every year, it gives me the time to see some of my suppliers, where I don't have time to see for the year. Meeting some people, some suppliers, and you have a lot of uh, meetings. It's quite a good place to have it. And uh, see some friends who didn't see it, see some new produce, new material, new equipment. It's a really, really important time for me. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about Michelin stars. Two restaurants quite close to you, Dinner and Greenhouse, recently achieved two stars like you've got. Um, what do you think that says about the quality of dining here in the capital? The quality is getting better and better every year. There's a lot of new places who've got one star, a lot of small places who've got a big gourmet. I think it's, uh, it's just showing what Britain is about at the moment and what the food is really developing on the right quality. And this picture of Britain where the food is old and disgusting is finished. And I think you need to, need to be aware of what's going on, and I think that is fantastic. And one notable development we've seen this year has been this casualization of, of dining, particularly at the top end. We've seen the likes of Social Eating House and Lima both achieving stars. Uh, what do you think about that as a more traditional chef? What do you make of this sort of casualization? I think, you know, if you... I think it shows you the way the gastronomy is going. People want to eat great food, but they want to eat great food in a different environment. And I think for social eating arts it's fantastic, I love the place. What Jason's done here is fantastic, fantastic job. And uh, his chef is a good lad, you know, a young chef, very motivated, very dedicated. Lima is the same, I mean Lima shows you the different variety of style of food you can get in London. With that Peruvian food, I think the South America, all this part of the world, is getting really upfront, and it's good because they got great produce. And now, as a more traditional restaurant, I would say you have to listen to this. Yeah. You have to open your eyes and realize what people want. Yes. Because if not, you could stay in your bubble, and I could be closed in a couple of years' time. Yeah. Like I would not say I'm going to have people in sandals serving food, but I think you have to realize what people want. And would you ever consider opening a more casual, less formal restaurant of your own? I don't know what you call casual, what you call fine dining, you know? Yeah. I don't have any penguin in a restaurant. You know, we, we try to do the job as the best as we can. Is that is formal? Okay, maybe we are formal, but we, uh, we took the thick carpet, we took the skirting on the table, just to make the restaurant a bit more noisy, a bit more buzzy, and I think that's what it's about. But it's true, you can have some time this idea of a fine dining to Michelin star restaurant where it's a sanctuary where you can't really talk, and I want to go away from it. I want to show you, you can be a two-star or a three-star restaurant and still have fun. And I think that's what the restaurant is about. OK, and I wanted to talk about uh, pub food. We've seen the likes of Tom Kerridge rising to fame recently with a TV programme of his own. Uh, you've obviously a consultant with, uh, with two pubs of your own. Um, what do you think about the sort of the quality of, of pub food at the moment in the UK? I think it's fantastic. I think what Michelin's done with Tom, who's done to some other pub, has been fantastic. Yeah. Because, you know, before you used to have this idea of a pub chef where oh, we're just a pub chef and we just fry things around and put it on a plate. And I think by showing, you know what, it's good quality in a pub, I think it's the best things you could done for this country. We are really promoting. You can go to a local pub, have some fantastic food, local source produce, and cook at its best. And I think it's the best things you could done for Britain. And Marco Pierre White, who was here at the restaurant show last year, has recently been quoted as saying that um, pubs need to kind of really refine their food offering if they want to avoid closure. Would, would you agree with that? Definitely. I mean, you know, the, the idea of uh, the drink and drive is finished. You can't go for more than two pints and drive back home. So you have to have something that attract these people. And I think I've been thinking to go to a local pub not far away from where you live and have great food. I think that is the way it should go. And it's good produce in this country, it should be easy to do it, you know. Just try to keep it as simple as possible and just cook some good home food, what you would like to eat yourself. OK, so what's next for Claude Bosi then? Should we expect anything a bit different from Hibiscus, perhaps a new restaurant? Next year for me, like we mentioned earlier, try to keep busy. Yeah. Big overhead. Yeah. And uh, the restaurant is doing well, it's fantastic. More openings, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I, I want to... I'm still looking after these two pubs, even if I lost my share from it to be able to buy hibiscus. I'm still very close to it because my name is to towards these pubs. And uh, pushing hibiscus even more forward than we are now. And keep being busy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.